You know, earlier uh, Vicky was talking about how Jerry Udelson said, you know, let's make it real. Uh, in politics, in order to make it real, and I believe in every other world, you've got to be really specific. Let me give you an example. I was with a group of mayors in, uh, uh, in Senator Dianne Feinstein's office a few years ago, and we were talking about the America Recovery Act. We were talking about $3 billion and how they were going to go across America and how they're going to be utilized by cities. And there was a big debate because we were talking about whether it should all be formula-based or whether there's going to be competitions for you know, demonstration projects. And a majority of us, or many of us, wanted more of the money just go to formula because we already think we know what we can do. There's a lot of technologies, a lot of basic low-hanging fruit that, that we can implement. Others thought, well, but you know, if, if we make it competitive and put more of the money in competition, that'll be better over the long term. At the end of the day, Senator Feinstein said, give me language. What you want, put it on paper, a sentence, whatever it is. You have one hour, go figure it out. So when you're pressured like that, you figure things out. They're critical moments. I was with you know, some of the largest uh, uh, you know, city mayors in California. We're all friends. We hang out together. And we put our, 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 our words in a sentence. We gave it to the senator. There was a group of senators in a hotel somewhere where they were having a meeting. They put it in the language. The American recovery came out, and 85% of the money went to formulas. And that means that very quickly, you know, we started to get the money out to cities, cities across America. And, and what I would offer to all of you is that, you know, any technologies, any ideas, any things that we can find that, as Jerry says, are in the real world, you know, I, I can serve as a vehicle to help get it out there to the rest of the country. Um, you know, we have a lot of hunger among cities, a lot of cities, a lot of people trying to do the right thing. And, and over the years, we have had some victories, not enough, but we've had some victories. There was a time, for example, we were trying to go to natural gas for vehicles. Well, here in Orange County, that was a real battle. We have literally hundreds and hundreds of large buses that run on, on typically on diesel or gasoline. Well, today, because of me sitting on that, uh, on that board and pushing staff, every single bus here in Orange County runs on natural gas. And we have our own filling stations, we, we have our own you know, maintenance uh, procedures. And, and, and look, often the alternative is better than what you've had before. But, but, but we're so you know, locked into you know, trying to you know, be secure and we're afraid to try anything different, especially government and large institutions. I mean, they told me, Miguel, we can't put them on natural gas. You know, what happens if they don't work? What happens if you have all these people waiting for the bus and the bus is not coming because it's on uh, natural gas? I said, look, natural gas has been around a long time. We haven't used it, but it's there. Well, today, look, we're not missing anything. Not only that, if you're out there walking or jogging or whatever and an OCTA bus goes by, you don't smell anything. In the old days, it'd be a real problem. And, and we had real problems in other areas, like, like our trash trucks in the city. You know, they would all run as well on, on, on very high polluting fuels. Today, working with waste management, they're not only able to take some of the gas that comes out of the landfills, we compress that gas, clean it up, and put it right back in their vehicles. So today, you know, they say, like, think clean and, 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 and you know, waste management. Well, over 1,000 vehicles have been converted here in Southern California. So today, when a trash truck goes by, it's no longer what it was, uh, you know, previously. And look, technology is changing so quickly. And there's so many, many new ideas that it's difficult often for government to try to figure out, well, how do we, what is it? You know, how do we deal with it? I mean, I, I, I helped develop at the Port of Lo uh, Los Angeles a few years ago an electric bus. Well, not a bus, a, a truck that could pull, you know, you know, 100 tons at, you know, while it was stopped, going at grade. And when we tried to get it permitted, there was nothing that would enable you to permit an electric truck. And so we had to go get a smog check. 
I remember we're there at the smog station and, and we're telling the guys, but look, we don't even have a tailpipe. We don't have a regular motor. We have a bunch of batteries with an electric motor and they're saying, yeah, but you know, we still have to run the test on the dyno. So, so, so we put it on the dyno and the wheels start turning and they have their you know, smog analyzer and they have their probe and they can't figure out where to put it because there's no pipe. And, 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 and so you know, we said, well, look, we'll, we'll make up a pipe. We'll just attach a pipe, connect it to nothing. You can put it in there. You can get a, you can get a zero reading. And, uh, and, 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 and then the problem was, well, but you're at zero. Nobody's ever been at zero. And you know, we, it, it, you're way below the cut point. Um, look, we got it passed, but it was tough. And, and, and it seems absurd today, but without that, you can't get your DMV license and you can't ride on a public road. So, so, you know, so many times, it's not the inventor or the technology, it's government and it's limited vision to open things up to enable things to happen. And, and, and so, you know, we're pushing more and more and more. And sometimes nature forces us to do things. Right now we have a drought here in California. And, and, and earlier, you know, uh, you know, we talked about maybe, you know, the lunch is going to be around the corner. Hopefully it's not raining. Well, you know, John Irvine said, hopefully it is raining. He's right. Hopefully it will be raining because we need every single drop of water. You know, I, I was in a meeting uh, earlier last week with Governor Brown and a group of mayors and all his water gurus, and it was a tough meeting because he was saying, look, either you guys are gonna have to reduce to certain levels or we're gonna have to you know, penalize. And you're gonna have to penalize. We're all gonna have to penalize each other in order to bring the numbers down. And you start looking at the numbers and their cities, like, like you know, Palm Desert out uh, not too far from here out uh, in the Coachella Valley that uses about, it was in the hundreds of gallons per person, uh, you, know, uh, you know, per year, uh, excuse me, per day. And, and they were like at, you know, 400 gallons per person per day because you got a bunch of golf courses and this and that and other cities and they're saying we can't cut. You know, Beverly Hills, over 200 gallons per person per day. And they're saying we, it's going to be really tough. How do we cut? And, and look, the state's trying to get us all to cut and it's the right thing to do and we can do it, but I'll tell you, in Santa Ana, one of the lowest in the state, 78 gallons per person per day. The only lower uh, ones that I saw were, were a few cities uh, down in San Diego, but the 78, even that number is not accurate. Why not? Because here in Orange County, over 10 years ago, we invested and created a system where we clean up the water down at the sanitation district at the mouth of the Santa Ana River, right where the ocean is, and we clean up the water and it goes back upstream and we inject it in, in, in water wells and it goes back under wa underground again and we use it. So today, 70% of the water in all this area of central Orange County and Curlington where we are right now, 70% of it is TTT, toilet to tap. And, and, and look, at the end of the day, all the water on the planet's been toilet to tap. I mean, you know, it, it, it's not coming in from outer space on some magic ship. You know, it, you know, the same water Columbus sailed on is here today. It's, it's the same water, but sometimes we can't get there. And in my home, including my wife saying, you better not do that. You know, to they're gonna vote you out. You know, who wants to drink toilet water? You're <laughs> really crazy now. I said, look, we have no choice and it's not toilet water. I can scientifically prove to you that it is cleaner than the stuff we're getting right now. Well, I don't care what you prove, it's still toilet water. <laughs> and, 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 but look, we overcame it. And in areas like Los Angeles, they haven't done that. They haven't done that. Today, all the water out of the sewer plant goes out into the ocean. So, you know, again, for us, it's 70%. And the goal for us, even though on a good year, we get 13 inches of, of, of water per year, which isn't a lot of water, it's to go to 100%. And I think we can get there. And, and, and look, we have to do our, our share as individuals, but part of it is also just, you know, you know, general practices. I mean, when I was in the meeting with the governor, I said, you know, tell the whole, all the mayors, how much water does it take to produce one pound of, of, uh, of meat? 
Nobody knew. Well, it's 2,400 gallons for one pound of meat. How many showers would you have to not have in order to save that 2,400 gallons? It turns out that they estimate that the average shower is about 13.33 gallons per person per shower. I don't know if that's accurate, but assuming that, that, that that's a reasonable number, that's six months. You would have to not shower for six months to save the amount of water it takes to not consume one pound of beef. And so, look, I'm not saying you should stop showering. <laughs> But, but, but on occasion, if you bypass something, and I'm not against the meat industry, but you know, we have to have a different consciousness. We have to have the ability to figure out how do we, as citizens of this planet, look into our own you know, water footprint. You know, we, we've talked about a carbon footprint. We need a water footprint. We need to figure out what are we doing to reuse, to recycle, to save, to be more aware, and, 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 and to make a difference. Because in California, what happens if it doesn't rain next year? We're almost out of water right now. Nobody's going to come in and save us. I mean, there's folks that are talking about, you know, maybe you can take an iceberg or something from the North Pole and float it down and bring it in and melt it. That's not going to work. Um, there's other people that want to build, you know, multi-billion dollar underground pipelines from Canada and areas where maybe there is extra water right now. That's not going to save us next year. Look at what happened to Australia. Australia kept thinking it's going to rain, it's going to rain, it's, and it didn't. And they, all, they lost tremendous amount of, 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 of resources because they didn't consider it an emergency. So today here in California, we're in an emergency. We have about a year left of water. You look at all the dams, you look at all the reservoirs, everything is dry and getting drier. And so we need to you know, begin to conserve and, and, and often in cities, that's where you know, folks come to, to, to knock on the door. But I'll tell you, part of what I told the governor and others is, we can't just beat up the cities. You, know, you can beat up people all you want. We consume about 10% of the water in the state. So if we can save 25%, that's 2.5% of the water in the state. The big consumers are really agriculture, and it's a small percentage of the economy, and again, none of us are against agriculture, but we need to figure out what makes sense and how are they using water. In many cases, there's a lot of water being used to grow alfalfa, to be flown overseas to Japan and other places. So in essence, we're subsidizing certain economies that are not good for the environment. So you know, eating locally, eating lower on the food chain, you know, you know doing what you can. I mean, I, I think it was the mayor of, I don't know, Alhambra, some mayor, he, he goes into the shower with a, with a bucket and, and, and he tries to shower in the bucket or something, he walks out with a bucket of water. I, I don't know that that's the best, but, 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 but you know, people are trying to do stuff, and, and that is good, and that is good. Here in, the, well, in Santa Ana, part of what we're doing is we're trying to change our you know, gutters and encourage people to do uh, gutter modifications. Because right now, gutters, what do they do? They take water, you put it in the runoff, you put it on the street so you can get rid of the water. Well, that's beautiful water with you know, high levels of, of O3 in it, and, and it's good for plants. So if we just let it go into the ground and recharge the aquifer, you know, that'd be much better at going into the backyard than out onto the street. And, and today, when somebody wants to develop something, we won't let them develop it unless it is uh, 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 you know, being kept on the premises where, where, the, um, where the building is. Um, look, outside earlier today, I saw the signs, and it's one of the, you know, Sungevity, one of the sponsors, and it said something like, you know, every four minutes there's a new, you know, solar system installed in America. Look, it's a nice stat, because I remember when that was zero, but, God, it's got to be every four seconds there's a new system installed across America. Um, and, and then they said something like five minutes, you know, and that that's the amount of time it takes for people to make a decision to have solar. You know, hopefully it's a lot less than that because the decision is in our mind. You know, today, you know, with solar at under a dollar a watt and smart inverters um, and, and, and some of the incentives we have are in the state, you know, again, it, it ought to be much quicker than that and, 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 and we ought to be able to move forward. Uh, the privilege of serving you and of, of serving not only on the, you know, as being chair for eight years of the U.S. Conference of Mayors Energy Committee, but also on the technology committee at AQMD. That's the Air Quality Management District. We try to make the air clean in, uh, here in Southern California. 
And I'm the only engineer on that board. I'm almost the only engineer I ever run to into politics. Most of them are lawyers. And look, I love a lot of lawyers, but they, they try to look out for the worst case condition. <laughs> and, and, and so they're always playing defense. And if you go too much in that direction, you know, you won't move because everything will be paralyzed. What I try to do, I said, look, let's figure out what harm we might cause if we fail. Assume we're going to fail, but let's go ahead and walk. Let's go ahead and take a step forward. Let's go ahead and make a difference. So we took, back in 2003, a Toyota Prius, put in a, you know, a battery pack in the, past, in the back, put in a charger, and decided we're going to have a plug-in hybrid. Toyota said, you can't do that. You're going to avoid the warranty. We, we, we don't want you to do this. We said, look, we're going to do it anyways. And we got into the codes. We started changing the codes. We created our own plug-in hybrids, hybrids right here in Southern California. There was a moment in time, 2006, where the CEO of Toyota sent his private jet with his chief technical advisor to come look at what we were doing. Because we're telling them we're getting 75 miles per gallon, you know, you know between, between the, the electricity and the, 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 the gasoline that we're using. We're able, to, it's like a big golf cart. Well, look, eventually it, it, it's all happened now. Toyota's coming up with the real plug-ins. Um, you know, we have everybody else, uh, you, know, uh, you know, Tesla doing wonderful, wonderful work. The world is changing. And as it changes, as a public uh, you know, policy person and an engineer and knowing what I know, I've got to push it forward. So today I'm trying to do things like a streetcar in Santa Ana. We need to have electricity associated with transportation. We're trying to make more energy efficient buildings. Something like 40% of all of the energy in the country is consumed within, uh, within buildings. Buildings are more efficient, and in California in particular, because of Title 24, we use about 50% of the energy that buildings across America do. And, and, and so there are a lot of proactive things we can do. And conservation, I think, is still the low-hanging fruit, but new technologies. And today I met, and you'll hear from her later, um, I still have difficulty pronouncing her name because the R is silent, but Marjolein, uh, you know, she's from the Netherlands, and she was telling me about this, and I'm not going to get into her speech because she can do it a hundred times better than I can, but this is the type of technology that we need, the out-of-the-box thinking, um, uh, you know, to be, and, and literally out-of-the-box, because here she has a box, but she can put this out-of-the-box, put it into areas and generate electricity that is, that, that's already there in nature, in essence. And, and, and as we do that, we can do so much better. I'm going to leave this conference early because I'm on a plane to Dallas. What's going on in Dallas? There's a Russian inventor that wants to meet me that, that has a machine that I'm going to look at that can potentially separate water through cavitation. Cavitation is a process that you can see often in water. Uh, like if you were to shoot a bullet um, in underwater, you can see that, that there's no air there. But when the bullet goes by at a very fast speed, and you can see this on the internet, all of a sudden you separate water and you see air. There wasn't there, but you see air because you're separating the oxygen and the hydrogen. Turns out that happens at a very high temperature. This man has it in a machine where, where he's able to do that separation. Again, I'm not announcing anything. I, I'm, I'm, I'm still in the research mode, but I'm just telling you that there's so many technologies out there that are, that are very promising that if we as public officials can allow them to enter the market and to make a difference, that is going to be a big part of the future and, and, and what we do and how we get there.